Hello folks and welcome back to the Tesla project. Um, today we have sent off the design files for the small drive unit logic board. So what does that leave us to do? Well, we need to get back to the charger. And by the charger, I'm talking about the 10 kilowatt onboard uh, Gen 2 charger um, as used in the Model S. So when we last left you on that particular project, um, we were poking around at the internal CAN bus of the uh, charger and looking at how the, mo the power modules <coughs> uh, work to together and work with the logic board. And I'm pleased to say that we've made a few interesting discoveries to today. Uh, I, I thought would warrant a video so that we can share them with you guys. So let's go have a look and see what we've got going on. So uh, we've got our charger again here. And the first thing that we've managed to be able to do today is to get the power modules themselves to come online without the uh, Tesla logic board being attached um, and what that's enabled us to do has been to log the CAN traffic that each of the modules themselves send out when they're in a turned on state. Now to be in a turned on state they need uh, three things. They need um, a 5 volts, a 12 volts and an enable. Um, and once those lines are provided, uh, the module will turn a red LED somewhere around here um, on. I will commence pumping out uh, CAN messages. And each of these modules <coughs> will do pretty much the same thing. So let's go have a look here at what that CAN traffic kind of looks like. Because... Um, I think there's something here, uh, and I'm hoping you, you guys might be able to help me spot it. So, <clears throat> the logic board itself puts out five CAN IDs, um, pretty much the numbers that you see here. Now, where it gets interesting are the CAN IDs that the power modules put out. They put out 15. Uh, they're in... These kind of blocks, I've kind of broken them into the twos, threes, five, and seven ID. And you'll see here, <clears throat> and if we take the first ID from block one, it's OX207. The first ID from block two is 0X209. And from block three is 0X20B. And that is giving us a jump of 7 to 9 to B, which is 2. Um, basically, 7 to 9 is 2, and 9 to B is 2 as well. So, what it looks like <clears throat> is that all three of the power modules listen for these control messages. And basically, uh, they go and provide power you know they do the power conversion stuff now that led me another little bit of a discovery um, each of the power modules has a 12 pin JST plug that connects the signals from the logic board um, here this 24 way JST excuse me uh, breaks down and gives us the three uh, connections to each of the power modules. Now, each power module then has um, a selection of these shorting links. And for ex example, module three has got the de has got two links fitted. Uh, module two, don't know if you'll be able to see this, but 
module 2 has got the top link fitted only probably won't be able to see in here unless I get this out of the way but module 3 or sorry module 1 has got the bottom link fitted and I have a little bit of a theory that it's the configuration of these jumpers on these plugs that is giving us these CAN IDs. So I'm going to try to prove that. So what I've done at the minute is I've got all of the all of the power modules unplugged. I'm just going to have to wedge this plug out a bit. It keeps wanting to try to go back in. Got this one plugged out, got module 1 plugged out, module 2 plugged out and visibly uh, module 3 plugged out. We have our CAN Dewey here um, on the CAN bus uh, to log the data that's being sent. So at the minute, if I throw on the 12 volt power, you can see we get activity lights on the logic board only, and um, we get uh, some CAN messages. We get our five uh, CAN messages being uh, sent there. Um, over on our PC. So, th so those are our five control messages 10, 42, 43, 44 and 45C. Um, so then what happens is this thing goes asleep basically. So if I connect this plug back in to module 3 with the two jumpers in it's going to give me the module 3 CAN addresses. But I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cut the link on the top and I'm going to cut this top jumper temporarily. Plug it back in and see if we get CAN IDs from module 3 that we uh, would normally expect from module 1. Excitement. Okay, so let's see if I'm right about this. Um, theoretically now we have module 3 with this link cut. Let's see if it pretends to be module 1. Power on. So module 3 is alive. Control board's alive. And we've got some CAN messages. And my first message there is OXO207. And if we come over here and look. 207 is a block 1 CAN ID and indeed 217, 227, 237 are all showing up there as um, block 1 IDs. Alright, so I've just done the worst soldering job of my life soldering these guys back together. So let's go for it now again. Power on. We've got control board, module 3 back over look at our can and we're sending uh, the first message is OXO20B and OXO20B is our block tree uh, can ID first message all right so last thing uh, we've got rid of the logic board here bye bye uh, I've plugged all of the 12-way connectors back in our power supply is currently turned on and is supplying 5 volts and 12 volts. As you'll see there's a small draw on the 5 volt line because uh, we're currently providing power, um, well we're currently providing 5 and 12 volts to module 1. Uh, but module 1 is not awake until we supply it and enable signal on this pin. And module 1 now wakes up. We have a red LED here uh, telling us that we're now powered up. And on the power supply, we're now drawing power from both the 12 volt and the 5 volt lines. And if we go over to our savvy can, and I'll put it into overwrite mode and clear frames, you'll see there that we've got all of our block 1 uh, can IDs clicking away merrily. So, those are again just the block one, 15 can IDs there.
So that's about what I've got for you guys at the minute. We're not charging yet, uh, but we've made a good deal of progress today. Um, good news is that I think I have a line on somebody crazy enough to let me um, go at their charger uh, in a car where I can log some of these CAN messages during the start middle and end of a charging cycle and what I suspect is that if we play that back to one of our modules here that we'll be, be able to get it to wake up and start uh, pumping some power out and we still have a long way to go decoding all of these CAN IDs but I suspect it would be a lot easier to attack this charger from the inside uh, versus from the outside. So I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, don't forget to like and subs subscribe. Uh, do check out links in the description uh, for my Patreon and my PayPal donations um, email address. Should you wish to financially su support me in these crazy projects. Also link in the description to my GitHub page where you will find all of the design files and info uh, about what I'm working on in terms of the Tesla and other projects. Uh, for example, here with the charger stuff, you will find spreadsheets uh, from all of the can captures that I've carried out today. So that's it guys. Um, hope to see you in the next video. Uh, thanks for watching again and happy internal CAN network hacking.